Hi, this is Kirk from livingfield.com. I'd like to welcome you to another session of our online learning academy, where today we're going to be discussing evening primrose, a prim and proper medicinal. The botanical name of evening primrose is Onothera biennis. Here are a few pictures of Onothera biennis. Some of the common names are evening primrose, primrose, sun cups, and sun drops. This plant can be found all across the United States. The family is the Onagraceae or primrose family. It is an herbaceous biennial. Uh, biennial means that it lives for two seasons. The stalks can reach three to four feet in height and that's pretty typically what you'll find. The leaves form a basal rosette consisting of lance-shaped leaves reaching almost a foot in length. The leaves have ragged edges that appear almost to be like they've been chewed or ripped apart. Um, they're covered with hairs and they have a prominent white midrib that can also have a reddish tint. The second year plant produces a single erect, stout, reddish flower stalk. This stalk, as I said, is about three to four feet in height, and the flower stalk may be branched at the base or it can be unbranched. This plant grows from a fleshy white taproot. That root can be over a foot long. While usually white, if it's in cold climates, the taproot can often be reddish in color. This plant flowers in summer through autumn. Flowers may be up to a couple of inches across and have four broad heart-shaped petals, which unite at the base, forming a long tube. The four-part stigma in the center of the flower forms an unmistakable X. You can see that in this picture. Here you can see the X of the stigma. Drooping sepals grow beneath the flower. Sepals are, you see in this picture here where you have the little green points, those actually peel apart, four of them peel apart, and the flower grows from that. These then hang down and they are the sepals. Seed pods develop from pollinated flowers, and you can see in the pictures on the right you have the seed pods. This plant prefers disturbed areas. It likes parks, empty lots, fields. It also grows along the seashores. The Onothera genus consists of over 125 species. Some are annuals and some are perennials. All are herbaceous. These varied species can range in size from small alpine plants growing to be about four inches tall to hardier tropical species growing up to almost 10 feet in height. The flowers are typically yellow, although they can range from white to red or purple. In the United States, we're normally going to find this plant with yellow flowers and up to about the three or four foot length. The part that you use are the leaves, the roots, and the seeds. First year roots can be used as a cooked vegetable. This plant has a peppery or radish-like flavor. You can enjoy the young leaves as you would a cooked vegetable. They can also be dried, crushed, and used as a flower substitute. While I say it can be used as a flower substitute, it actually works better as an enhancement. You would add this to existing flower because the leaves do not contain any glutens or you know plant proteins. So therefore, you would not be able to create like a bread or a muffin that is leavened. The following slides are meant for informational purposes only. They're not meant to diagnose or treat any illness or injury. Always consult with a physician or other qualified medical care provider concerning the diagnosis and treatment of any illness or injury. This plant really shines medicinally. Scientific studies have shown that it is effective at treating allergy-induced eczema, asthma, migraines, inflammation, PMS, breast problems, metabolic disorders, diabetes, arthritis, and alcoholism. There's also evidence that shows compounds contained within this plant are effective at treating prostatitis. 
American Indians used root tea to treat obesity and bowel pain. They also used a poultice of the root for piles and bruising. They were also said to have rubbed the root on muscles to give strength. This plant is anti-asthmatic, meaning that it reduces the symptoms of asthma. It is anti-inflammatory. It helps the body combat inflammation. It is carminative. It soothes and settles the gut wall, easing gripping and allowing the removal of gas. It is emollient. It has a soothing and healing effect on the skin. Onothera biennis has no toxic lookalikes. I'm not aware of any drug interactions concerning Onothera biennis. As always, though, you should consult with a physician prior to starting any herbal supplement. Onothera biennis is a plant with a rich history of medicinal use. I hope you get out into the natural world and harvest some for yourself. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If so, please try one of our other online videos. You might also be interested in one of our guided plant walks. You can find all of our training opportunities on our website at livingafield.com. I would appreciate you taking a moment and emailing me your feedback on this video to videos at livingafield.com. This ends our video presentation. I hope you have a wonderful day.